Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, I wanna to share with you 10 major benefits of fasting. Fasting is something that I have personally used. I must have accumulated at least 1500 hours fasted by this point. And honestly, that's probably a, a low ball estimate. I think fasting is one of the most powerful tools that we have in our healing arsenal. And today I wanna to share with you some of the benefits you can expect from fasting. So coming in at number one, we've got fat loss. Now I don't think you have to be a genius to figure this out, but if you don't eat food, you might burn some fat. It's almost a simple equation as one plus one equals two, but it's not just about being in a calorie deficit. Going without food for extended periods of time will affect and modulate a whole bunch of different processes in your body. Some of the most important with regards to fat loss being insulin, ghrelin, and leptin. These hormones are directly connected with your blood sugar balance and your hunger and satiety signals. Fasting is a fantastic way to balance them again. This can mean that simply by fasting, even abstaining from food, if it has excess body fat that it's ready to burn, by fasting, we can reset your hunger and satiety signals, which means when you come back to eating again, you actually have less appetite, you eat less food, and you feel more full. So the benefits for fat loss are not just simply about the period where you go without food and you're technically in a calorie deficit. It's also worth noting noting that many people hold excess body fat because their body is full of fat soluble toxins and the body is storing fat to store the toxins in. When we fast, we trigger a lot of detoxification processes and it allows our body to let go of many of these fat soluble toxins that we've been holding. And consequently, the fat just drops off. The second benefit ties in nicely with the fat loss benefits, being blood sugar control. So I don't know where you're tuning in from, but just looking at America, more than 50% of the population is obese and is facing either diabetes or prediabetes. And the common denominator when we're looking at obesity and diabetes is insulin. When we go without food for extended periods of time, up to say 12 plus hours, we can begin to enter a deep stage of ketosis and our insulin levels drop really, really low. If we can simply hold a period of time with our insulin levels low enough, it will begin to reset the insulin sensitivity in our body. This means that when we do eat carbohydrates again and we do stimulate an insulin release, the cells in the body have become significantly more sensitive to that insulin and consequently the body doesn't need to release so much. It's worth noting that this insulin resistance is the cause of diabetes in most people and high levels of insulin are basically the fuel for obesity. The body cannot burn fat when insulin levels are high and insulin levels are high if we are eating all of the time, especially carbohydrates. So fasting eliminates this, allows us to reset our insulin levels and therefore improve our blood sugar control. The third benefit that you can expect to see from fasting is enhanced brain function. Now there's several mechanisms behind how this works. The first being that we see an increase in the production of BDNF, brain derived neurotrophic factor. This is a compound that supports neuron growth and resilience and improves cognitive function. You'll also see an increase in autophagy and apoptosis, which are the body's self cleaning mechanisms. And you'll see this process is extremely high where we have a high density of mitochondria. And the place that we have the most mitochondria are in our nervous system tissues, including our brain, our spinal cord, and our eyes. So a little side benefit for you there can improve your vision as well. The fourth benefit that you can expect to see are reduced levels of inflammation. It's been tested and measured over and over again. In a fasted state, the biochemical markers of inflammation begin to decrease. And again, there are several mechanisms as to why this is happening. The autophagy and apoptosis, as aforementioned, are probably a huge part of this. You could imagine this like your body is tired. Think about what happens to you when you're tired. You start making more mistakes, you're not as productive, you don't get your work done very well, and you just need a good night's sleep. And then you wake up the next day and you'll be so much more productive and you'll get so much more done. In a similar way, fasting facilitates this similar kind of reset in your body. If all of your cells are broken and they're not productive and they're not working in their best fashion, we can activate these processes to break these things down and generate new ones. So when the body gets back to work again, it's so much more efficient. It produces a lot less inflammatory molecules in this process. And again, those aforementioned detoxification benefits mean that we're gonna be removing significant toxicity from your body, which is obviously gonna result in lower levels of inflammation. I do also suspect that some of the mechanisms for the reductions in inflammation are connected to the gut but we're going to come to that very shortly. The fifth benefit that you can expect to see from fasting are improvements in your heart health. The main benefits that we're talking about here are improvements in cardiovascular risk factor indicators, including things like blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and triglycerides. This makes a lot of sense, especially when you're looking at cholesterol and triglycerides, when you understand that the function of cholesterol is to help your body combat inflammation. And if we're bringing inflammation levels down, the need for cholesterol is going to be lower. Also, cholesterol is broken down in our livers, and our livers have to process and assimilate every Every single molecule of food that we eat. So when we don't eat anything, we free up all of this space inside of our liver so it's able to do all of these other jobs that it hasn't had the space to do. The improvements in triglycerides are also really noteworthy because traditionally you see triglycerides
triglyceride levels begin to increase as a consequence of high blood sugars and high levels of insulin. Triglycerides are what the body turns dietary fat into to be burnt for fuel. But if the body is never having the opportunity to go into ketosis, into a fat burning state, these triglycerides, they just build up in the blood and the body never gets to use them. And perhaps even more sinister than that, when our insulin and blood sugar levels stay high all the time, the body actually becomes very inefficient at burning triglycerides. And what then happens is when we go without food, insulin crashes, blood sugars crash, and the body doesn't even know how to use these triglycerides for fuel. So that's why it's really important that you know how to fast correctly. And I've got another video coming about that really, really soon. So if you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that other video. The sixth benefit that you can expect to see from fasting is cancer prevention. Now, this isn't normally the direction I'd go in a video like this, but I found the studies to back it up. So I thought, why not? It's suspected that this is really connected to the autophagy and apoptosis mechanisms I described earlier as some schools of thought consider cancer cells to be normal human body cells that become dysfunctional. If we're able to activate this autophagy and apoptosis mechanism before these cells become aberrant, we can stop cancer cell formation before it even begins. There are also other schools of thought that have connected cancer to different types of toxicity and seeing that one of the most significant benefits of fasting are improved detoxification and assuming that toxicity can be a cause of cancer, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that improving detoxification could reduce your cancer risk. The seventh benefit of fasting, and this one might blow your mind a little bit, is improved physical performance. Now you might think that when we start fasting and we're putting our body in this sort of starvation mode, this autophagy and apoptosis mode, that we might actually lose muscle mass. But the thing is, your body is not stupid. It's not gonna break down all of this muscle tissue that it's spent so much time and effort to build. It's gonna break down damaged cells. It's gonna break down toxic fat. It's not gonna choose to break down your healthy muscles. The fat loss benefits here, as far as physical performance is concerned, are huge. And this is especially true for men because increased body fat increases a process called aromatase in the body, where your body converts your testosterone into estrogen. If you measure the top level athletes' testosterone levels, they're well above average. And this is one reason that bodybuilders actually inject exogenous testosterone to boost muscle growth. So if we can reduce body fat to reduce aromatase and reduce the process of testosterone converting into estrogen, you are gonna have improved physical performance. Also, all of the energy that we produce during physical performance comes from our mitochondria. So by fasting, we reset our mitochondria and allow them to break down all of the damaged components of themselves. And if they're too far gone, they'll just commit cell death and the body will replace them. The eighth benefit you can expect from fasting is improved longevity. Now there's two primary mechanisms behind this, one connected to fasting and one not. If you look at all of the different literature, you'll see fasting and calorie deficient diets improve lifespan significantly. So obviously when we're fasting, it can happen that we are in a calorie deficit. And that is one of the reasons for the improvements in longevity. But another benefit could be the fact that when we fast, we increase levels of HGH, human growth hormone by well over 500%. Human growth hormone is something that people actually pay for as injections. They'll go to clinics and they'll get injections of HGH for the longevity benefits. And you can achieve these same benefits simply by not eating food. So not only does it not cost you loads of money, it actually saves you money as well. Because I know that food is really expensive right now. And the ninth benefit that you can expect from fasting are improvements in gut health. Now, I know that you know that I really like gut health. So I've really geeked out on this and I've got some really interesting golden nuggets to share with you here. So first of all, when we're fasting, we're just allowing our digestive system to have a break. This is a really easy metaphor to extrapolate. I've seen studies where corporate workers are allowed to have increased holiday time and the manager's obviously concerned about this because they think that, that with less time, their, their workers, their employees are gonna be less productive. But what actually happens is their productivity increases. They make more money. They also have more positive emotions. They're healthier. They have better lives in general. So think about this metaphor applied to your gut. If you can give it a little bit of a break, if you can let it have a whole holiday here and there, not only will your digestive symptoms improve, but when you do come to eat again, the digestive symptoms will be less. You will have increased absorption. All of the mechanisms involved in digestion, like your gut lining, like stomach acid, like digestive enzymes and bile, they'll have all had a chance to restore and replenish themselves. There are also some wild changes that happen to your microbiome. First of all, if you have any kinds of parasites or dysbiotic organisms or microbiome imbalance, so this is things like SIBO, this is Candida, and this is especially true if you have organisms that have embedded themselves in biofilms. During this process of fasting, your body is actively gonna seek out sources of protein and nutrients that are already held inside of the body. So your body, instead of choosing its own healthy cells, it's gonna target dysbiotic organisms in your gut. It's gonna target biofilms. It's gonna focus on the these things, it's gonna rip them apart and it's gonna use them 
as ingredients to support your detoxification during your fast. One of the most noteworthy things about fasting's influence on the microbiome is how it can be extremely helpful at balancing out some of these really tricky organisms that are connected to the mucosal health. So this includes things like Acomantia mucinophilia and Fecalibacter prosnutzii, but this also includes other things like Rosburia and even Lactobacillus bifidobacterium and your ratio of Bacteroides to Firmicutes. Now there's always exceptions to the rule, but I genuinely believe with the right probiotics and fasting in a way that is healthy and supports your body, you can seriously heal almost any digestive problem on earth. Now, the final benefit that we have on our list today are enhanced cellular repair and autophagy. So I've spoken about these things a little bit, but I just wanted to dive into them in a little bit more detail. I think the thing that is most important to look at when it comes to cellular repair and autophagy is the mitochondria. Now, say it with me. The mitochondria is powerhouse of the cell. So if we can improve the health of your mitochondria, we're going to improve the health of all of your cells. And if we improve the health of all of your cells, we're going to improve the health of all of you. So this is improved digestive function. This is improved liver function. This is improved immune function. This is improved cognitive function. There's not a single process or function in your body that isn't going to benefit from improved cellular function as a whole. There's this really tricky negative feedback loop that we can get stuck in. And I'm convinced this is what causes chronic fatigue syndrome for, for many people. And this was a factor in my chronic fatigue syndrome. I call this the negative redox detox feedback loop. You can explain this very briefly by understanding that when a mitochondria attempts to turn fuel into energy for us, if it's unable to complete this process because the mitochondria is damaged, not only does it not create this energy molecule, but it actually creates a reactive oxygen species instead, aka an inflammatory molecule, the opposite of an antioxidant, which goes on a rampage through your body, damaging all of your cells and creating this negative feedback loop. As more mitochondria become damaged, we become less able to produce energy and create more and more reactive oxygen species. Fasting and the improvements in cellular repair and activation of autophagy can help us break this vicious cycle and allow our mitochondria to actually work for us and produce energy for us instead of inflammatory reactive oxygen species. When you do this overall, you're going to have less inflammation and way Way more energy but the place you might notice is the place we have the most mitochondrial density again being your brain your nervous system and your eyes so you tell me what was your favorite benefit on the list mine's obviously the gut health benefits because like why not if we can improve your gut health we can improve your overall health but there are some close contenders on this list so let me know are you going to try fasting after watching this video and if maybe you're hesitating a little bit because you're not sure how to do it properly in a safe and healthy way then don't worry as i said i have another video coming out really soon that's going to walk you through how to fast in a way that is obviously healing so if you have any questions please do let me know take care and i'll see you in the next one